Hello everyone, it's Leon here and welcome to this week's PS4 O'Clock. Now the biggest story we're starting off with this week is we have finally seen The Order 1866 in action. Ready at Dawn had an event with Sony and people were shown around about 40 minutes of gameplay. What's been released online is a two and a half minute video, B-roll video, showing essentially a, a cover shooter. Some people have been a bit torn, I think they're a little disappointed maybe that it was a basic kind of cover shooter, there were sort of cries of Gears of War and things like that. Um, but visually it does look astonishing. This, this stuff is all in-game, we can see at the moment. Um, all the cloth rendering, all that sort of stuff is, is looking incredible. They also do a lot of stuff with simulating cameras, so they're actually modelling, if you like, virtual cameras, virtual lenses to give it this sort of cinematic effect, which is also partly behind the, the letterboxing. I don't know whether that will be in the final game or not, because it does seem quite an odd aspect ratio. It's not going to fit on a lot of people's TVs. But as you can see, it does lend credence to the rumours that have been floating around that Sony have been referring to it internally as PS4's first Naughty Dog game. As I say, we've only seen two and a half minutes of it in action. Phil saw the full 40 minute presentation at the event, so if you want to see more there's on the site, you can see what he saw and also he chatted to Ready at Dawn about the, the game itself. It's a little too early, I think, to make any judgement other than it looks very pretty. We don't know yet what any of the other mechanics are. There's been talk of using the touchpad to tap out Morse code to call in airstrikes from the blimps above. I don't know how realistic that is. But I think on two and a half minutes, it's a bit too soon to call any kind of opinion on the gameplay. Just appreciate the fact it does look incredibly pretty. Date-wise, we are probably looking at an autumn-winter release this year. That's from some Sony tweets and from Sony's UKMD Fergal Gara talking about it coming out this year. Also on the video front this week, we've had a look at Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes with a comparison video that Konami have released showing it on PS4, PS3, Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Now, there are quite a lot of differences but it's surprising how similar they all do look. There's a shot showing all four side by side right at the beginning of the video and you'd be hard pushed to pick which was which. Um, and I actually, when I looked at it, I got the Xbox One and the PS3 versions the wrong way round. Lighting's one of the more obvious differences. There's a better lighting model, better kind of flare and glow on the next gen versions. Textures are also sharper and materials come across a lot more realistically, so the sort of the textures of, of leather, of fabric, of skin come across much more sharply, much more sort of accurately modelled. The frame rate is one of the more interesting differences. Both the current gen versions, so PS3 and Xbox 360, run at 30 frames a second. On PS4 it's running at 1080p 60 frames a second, and on Xbox One it's 720 60 frames a second. But when they slow the action right down, you can see that difference in that frame rate. We've also had confirmation that there will be a PS4 bundle for Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, currently only in Japan. Kojima tweeted a tease that he was thinking about it, or would people like it, and then almost immediately followed up with a link to Sony Japan's product page, showing essentially a PS4 with a Fox logo on it and a copy of the game. So it's basically a PS4 with a sticker and it's Japan only. Whether or not it comes to the UK or not, we'll have to wait and see, but I suspect we will see some kind of bundle closer to the release date. Now, last week I was talking about a report from Wedbush analyst and Michael Pachter, who was predicting that PS4 would sell another 12 million consoles this year. Since that report, Sony have now issued a statement to say that PS4 has sold 5.3 million consoles to date. That's just over a million more than the 4.2 million it announced in January. So it looks like Pacta's claim of 12 million PS4s by the end of the year could be true. Things to bear in mind are that it goes on sale in Japan this Saturday, so there'll be a huge sale boost there. And moving through the, towards the end of the year, when it gets to kind of November, Christmas time, I think we might see a bit of a price drop if the retailers don't drop it already. And then there will obviously be another sales hike around about that kind of Christmas period. Now we've had a good look at one of the more mysterious games on the PS4 with a 10 minute walkthrough of The Witness, including a commentary from Jonathan Blow explaining what the game's about and how the process of kind of exploration and puzzle solving works. We've seen more of the kind of the finger mazes. There are a lot of kind of line drawing elements to the puzzle solving, but we've seen stuff that isn't just drawing a line from A to B. One of the puzzles shown has some black and white dots and it's not immediately clear what you have to do until you realise you have to draw a line that separates the black and the white dots. 
what Blow has said that is the information you need to solve these various puzzles is in the environment and that knowledge is the key rather than, than the physical key. So you'll find a door, you'll find a barrier, a bridge that needs to be operated and in the surrounding area you will find the cues and the information you need to solve the finger drawing puzzle. It also looks like an enormous game. There's a, a section at the end of the video where he pans out to show the whole island. And essentially you are dropped in there with no instructions, no idea really what you're meant to be doing. Essentially create your own story as you explore and push further into the island and see what the, the puzzles uncover. Now one little uh, interesting tidbit of information that's come up this week is that Daylight, which is a procedurally generated horror game, is going to incorporate livestream spectators into the game. Now the way Daylight works is it procedurally generates levels, it generates scares, the idea being that it, it's a different game each time. The developers have said this, Streaming has been a huge boon to the PS4 community and the devs want Daylight to have an involved relationship with live streams. The hope is to allow viewers to control the actual scares in a streamer's experience, providing a much more interactive dynamic between players and audience. So effectively what will happen is that people watching you play the game will somehow be able to influence the game and the scares you're experiencing. They cite the Pokemon experiment currently happening at Twitch where people are playing the game through a sort of crowdsourced chat window. What I suspect might happen is that at certain points in the game there will be options to have a noise, a ghost come out, a monster, something like that, and people watching the stream will be able to type in the chat window and vote essentially for what happens. That's my theory, I don't know if that's true, but that would make sense given the Pokemon Twitch experiment they've talked about. It's an interesting idea anyway, and it certainly would add to the, the variety of a procedurally generated game. And finally, we've got a quick roundup of a few more bits and pieces that have been going on this week. We have seen the infamous pack shot in France, which has confirmed a 24 gigabyte install for the game. We've also had confirmation that Doom 4, or currently just Doom as it's called, is definitely happening and is coming to PS4. If you currently pre-order Wolfenstein The New Order on PS3 or PS4, you will receive an access code for Doom. What Doom is currently at this moment, we don't know. We know that it's had a bit of a sort of a troubled development. There's been leaked concept art that's been said to be out of date. We know that it's possibly been restarted a few times. But there is a beta coming with Wolfenstein, so I'm guessing there's a multiplayer component. But what the final game will be, we don't know. We just know that it's being promised by Bethesda. Another interesting piece of information is that Rhyme, the Ico-alike platformer action game we saw revealed a little while back, is starting to look a little bit more like Don't Starve. The trailers we've seen so far show a boy exploring an island, apparently trying to sort of fight off some monsters at night. The game was originally submitted to Microsoft under a different name, Echoes of the Siren. Microsoft rejected it, but the documents have leaked online and discuss essentially a survival mechanic where you craft equipment, you scout out resources and you explore during the day. Then during the evening you have to fight off monsters overnight in a kind of a tower defence mechanic. So you build machines, you build equipment, you have to fight off attacking monsters. Um, and sort of get to their source and prevent them spawning. It's been described as a cross between Gauntlet Minecraft and Jason and the Argonauts, which is clearly a lot different to what the trailer kind of suggested initially. It'll be interesting to see how much of the original pitch documents, which are from 2011-2012, how much of that kind of pitch has made it through to the final game. And finally, just to round off, we've got Optodad receiving an April, early April release date. That's from Young Horses themselves. They've tweeted that's what they're predicting. And also Rust, which is the sandbox survival game that's been incredibly popular on PC, is coming to PS4. Face Punch Studios have said it's planned, they just haven't started it yet. So there you go, that's the PlayStation 4 news this week. We've had our first proper look at the Order gameplay with a two and a half minute B-roll that came out of an event where journalists saw 40 minutes of gameplay. Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes has released a comparison video showing the differences between the four main platforms and there's also a Metal Gear Solid 5 branded PS4 bundle coming in Japan at the moment. PS4 has sold 5.3 million consoles to date according to Sony. We've seen 10 minutes of gameplay from The Witness with Jonathan Blow explaining more about the puzzles and the world you explore. Daylight has announced it will be incorporating live stream interaction into its procedurally generated scares. 
And to round everything off, Infamous Second Son will require a 24GB install. Doom has been announced for PS4 with a beta access code coming with Wolfenstein pre-orders. Rhyme looks like it could be a Don't Starve style survival game. Octodad will be coming out in early April and Rust will be coming to PS4 at some point. As ever, if you have any questions, leave a comment, I'll try to answer them. And if you've got any requests or anything you'd like to see on the show, again, leave a comment and I shall see you guys next week.